Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. So for a while we've been looking at a cart problem where we've added springs and damping and we've applied forces and all that jazz but I'd like to take a step back when we first saw it. When we first saw it it was some mass going along with some initial velocity and what we did is we applied a force and we saw that that force changed its motion and we said okay what's position as a function of time let's imagine now the earth in orbit around the Sun so the earth is here and it has some sort of velocity right here and we imagine that there's some distance here from uh, the center of the Sun to the center of the earth it's a really long distance and um, we have a sense that the earth rotating around the Sun it's going to continue but strangely it doesn't continue in a straight line rather it continues to rotate and just like our cart and the applied force we can imagine that if we applied some sort of force to suddenly slow down the Earth's velocity, some really strange things would happen. These two systems have the feel of sharing some characteristics. With our cart example, we have a mass moving at some velocity and it wants to keep going with that same momentum. In a similar way, we have an Earth that's rotating around the Sun and it wants to keep on doing that unless there's some outside influences. Today we're going to discuss angular momentum by looking at its similarities with linear momentum. We're going to list some basic equations for defining angular momentum and we're going to take a step back see if we can understand a little bit more. So let's start off with what we know about a cart. We know that the momentum and this can be in 1D or 2D, is equal to the mass times the velocity. And the only way to change this momentum is by some sort of force. In fact, we defined the change in momentum equals the force. And that's where we get our mass times acceleration. And if you want to be particular about it, it really isn't mass times acceleration. Rather, it's the derivative of mass times velocity with respect to time. Generally we have a constant mass so that's where we get our acceleration. Another thing that we've learned is the term impulse. This is a good way to see the difference between the impulse is the difference between two states momentum. So we could say that's the momentum of 2 minus momentum of 1 equals the integral from 1 to 2 of f dt. These are all rules for linear momentum. Corresponding with linear momentum is angular momentum. That is the radius crossed with mass times the velocity. Something important here is that the momentum is always about a point and the radius is always from that point to the mass. In this case it's point C. So in our example of the Sun and the Earth we see that there's some radius here. We see the Earth has some mass and it has some velocity. So up here we could say that the momentum H equals R cross uh, say the mass of the earth times we'll call this V naught V naught and we could even say this is the radius to the earth radius to the earth and that's all about the Sun so we could say about s earth with respect to s these are vectors and now we have the angular momentum of the earth around the Sun in the same way we could have gone back to our original equation and we could have said the momentum equals mass times V naught. The next thing we looked at on the linear side was that the change in momentum is equal to the force and in fact we have something just like that with angular momentum 
the change in angular momentum equals the moment. Another way to say this is moment or uh, also torque, same concept. And we define that as the radius, once again with respect to C, cross F. So with moment or torque, one could imagine that if we took some huge rocket and then applied some incredible force towards the backside of the Earth, then we would actually end up speeding it up. And as a result, this term would increase. And then what would happen is we would be changing the overall moment. In this case, we're applying some force at some radius, and we would see the moment change. Finally, we have the idea of linear impulse and angular impulse. Angular impulse, we take H2 minus H1, and we integrate with respect to time of RC cross F. So the radius with respect to C cross F dt. What, what's happening here? Well, one can imagine that, um, let's say, in our linear case, we have m v naught as the initial linear momentum. We add some force over some time, force times time, and we get some final velocity times mass. In the same way with angular momentum, Initially, we had some angular momentum of the Earth rotating around the Sun. Then we add the impulse resulting some, from some force applied over a length of time. We'll say it's a constant force. And that's going to be equal to our new improved, or well, that should be improved in our case, final angular momentum. So in summary, we have three rules that guide our thinking about linear and angular systems. We have the momentum. We have the change in momentum. We have an equation that looks at the change in momentum as a function of some sort of applied um, force or moment. And finally, we have the idea of impulse, which is the actual change from two, between two states of either linear or angular momentum. I hope this simple example gives you an introductory idea of the equations that govern angular momentum and what they mean at a more elementary level. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.